They say a man who represents himself has a fool for a client. Well, with God as my witness, I am that fool. What's up, my wizard's dev? SBMTG down there, magicstuffyoutube.com. And I've got a deck for you today that I think might be legit one of the most powerful decks in the format right now. I wanted to bring you a really, really competitive deck, and a lot of people, including myself and people in the comments, have had the idea of Naya midrange for a while, just adding green to the color combination of red and white. And it turns out we can do some really powerful stuff. Namely, we've got a bunch of really, really good planeswalkers in these colors. So what did we come up with? Let's check it out. I want to let you know before I give you my version of the deck that a few days, three, four days after I started fiddling around with the idea of Naya midrange, a few people suggested it in the comments, a pretty good sign occurred. A deck came in first place at StarCityGames.com Classic. Um, and it's Naya Midrange, actually, and it really, really had a lot of the same ideas that I was trying to go for. His deck is slightly different than mine in the main deck, the sideboard mostly, and the mana base. So I'll leave a link to his deck in the uh, description down there, but I'll go ahead and give you mine. I'm tempted to start with the Planeswalkers first. They actually make up a pretty good portion of the deck here. We're playing a bunch of them. Um, but what I'm going to do actually is start with a couple of really important enchantments that set us up very, very well. Um, those being Oath of Nyssa and Oath of Chandra. We're going to play a playset of each of those. Oath of Nyssa is indispensable. There's 46 valid targets for it in the deck. That's a better than two-thirds chance that you'll hit something. Um, you'll, you'll always get something whether it's a land or not. And even if it's, you know, if you're looking for specifically not a land, there's still about a one in three chance that you'll hit not a land in the deck. Um, and this, again, we're playing something like 10 Planeswalkers and 11 creatures. Um, in the deck, and it really helps us find those Planeswalkers, and it lets us play fewer copies of each Planeswalker. That's also really, really important there. Helps smooth out our mana base if that's what we're looking to do. Helps find creatures that we can only play two or one copy of, even. Um, so Oath of Nyssa, just a really, probably the key card in the deck that allows us to run fewer copies of things and a lot of different, like, Planeswalkers and creatures. I should also bring up that with 10 Planeswalkers in the deck, being able to pay whatever mana you just have lying around for them is obviously powerful too. So Oath of Nyssa has really just really been one of the best cards in the deck. And then Oath of Chandra, not only is it removal, which is actually really important that we have second turn removal in this format, and it can take out a Sylvan Advocate, you know, turn two, that's important. Um, but also that extra bit there, the second ability, can end up doing six, eight damage for you over the course of a game. And sometimes it's just like really be the difference, you know. The deck's going to go really, really long. So if you play an Oath of Chandra early and it sticks to the board, then you can really end up doing a bunch of damage with this. As promised, we're playing 10 Planeswalkers in the deck. This is a Super Friends deck, basically. Um, and that's a lot. <laughs> I've already stated that we can play fewer copies of these Planeswalkers because we're playing a full playset of Oath of Nyssa. So what do we end up doing here? I'm going to start with some Planeswalkers that make tokens for us. Those being a 2 of um, Nyssa Voice of Zendikar, a 2 of Gideon Ally of Zendikar, and a 2 of Arlen Kord here. Nyssa and Gideon are obviously a great combination. They've proven that a few times, and they just won the Pro Door, basically. Um, especially on Kurt, you know, third turn Nyssa, third, uh, four turn Gideon is fantastic. <laughs> it can set you up very, very well. Also, um, all of these tokens producing Planeswalkers um, are very good against cards like Languish and other sweepers in the format, which are very popular right now because they can sweep you. You can just set right back up the next turn pretty easily. Um, Arlen Cord, I have found, has been very good against Bant Company. Um, can throw a blocker out there or just something to help you clog up the board, period, you know, whether you're going to end up attacking with that, sort of starting a war of attrition, or if you need a blocker. And then when she flips over, she can kill things like, you know, Sylvan Advocates that aren't turned on, or Reflector Mages, Bounding Crisis. So uh, just everything she does is nice. And again, we board stall against Bant Company a lot, and her, um, one of her first ability on her flip side can really, really help in board stalls. Also, her ultimate's crazy if you do get it off, but I can say that about all of these Planeswalkers. Um, we'll use Gideon's ultimate like every game, and this is ultimate. If you get it off, then that is freaking crazy. So, all of these Planeswalkers um, right here essentially perform the function of making tokens, yes, but they all do other stuff for us, too. So, And they all have the um, ability to make tokens bigger, you know? So, just, yes, all of these work together. They synergize very, very well. The other Planeswalkers we're playing are a 2 of Nahiri and a 2 of Chandra Flamecaller. So every Planeswalker in the deck is a 2 of, but again, Oath of Nyssa helps smooth that out 
very, very well. And they all do things depending on where you are in the game and what the board state is like. Um, very, very flexible deck. Well, uh, that's, that's pretty nice. Nahiri is actually really good removal. And we can just sit back on her and use her as a card selection engine until we can get one of these big creatures out that we're playing um, with her ultimate. We are playing one of multiple creatures in the deck, and Nahiri really helps with that if we can get to her ultimate. Um, her ultimate's very situational, too. We'll pull out a different creature depending on the situation, which can really be nice in a sort of toolboxy way. But even if you're just removing things with Nahiri or, you know, selecting cards, everything she does is very nice. Very underrated planeswalker, I think. Um, and then Chandra, <laughs> freaking tastic. Um, I would venture to say overrated, but everyone knows how good Chandra is. I'll just put it that way. She can also create tokens, and she can draw a bunch of cards, which is really good in this deck where nearly every card is a very powerful card. We're playing 11 creatures in the deck, and only one of those creatures is a two drop. We're playing a whole playset, though, of Sylvan Advocate here, a, a format staple at this point. We see this card in a lot of decks, and it's because it's good at most points of the game. You know, Early on in the game, it's a great blocker, clogs up the board very well, and blocks a lot of things in the early game, and then late game it turns into a 4-5 big dude, you know? Um, it's sort of the Termagoy of the format is what this card feels like. Um, great that it works with person lands, man lands, whatever you call them. Um, in this deck we get to play Needle Spires, so <laughs> getting a huge buff on a double striker is always good too. So a lot of good things about Sylvan Advocate, the deck goes fairly long, and getting a big guy in the late game is just always great. Sylvan Advocate, a perfect creature, uh, nothing wrong with this. We're playing a two of Nissa Vasswood Seer in the deck. Now, don't freak out. Um, you can totally play both in the same deck. You know, it, it's not incongruous to a huge degree. You know, um, they're totally different, and you can have both versions of the map. You have a Vasswood Seer and a Voices in the car. You can do that. It's totally legal. Don't worry. But this does completely different things than her Planeswalker counterpart, Voices in the car. Um, third turn, this is great, especially after a Sylvan Advocate. Really has a sort of synergy with that, and that it helps you get to those six lands by going and getting you a basic forest. Also just basically smooths out your mana curve in a nice way because we're playing a lot of like four drop planeswalkers in the deck. So having a three drop that goes and gets us our fourth land can be really, really nice. We need something like that a lot. And once she does flip, which will be later on in the game, she's a card advantage engine, which is what we're gonna use her for a lot. But if we can ultimate her, we win the game. And if you have a Voice of Zendikar and you're about to flip your Basswood Seer into a Sage Animus, then you can just <laughs> pretty much um, what I end up doing every time is either ultimate me, ultimating my Voice of, Voice of Zendikar off of the board or just using her Neg 2 ability and putting a plus one plus one counter on everything and getting her off the board. And also, when you flip over into Sage Animus, you can just get rid of your Voice of Zendikar. By that point, she's probably done her job anyway, and Sage Animus is just a better card later in the game. So you're not really too worried about playing these two cards alongside one another, you know? Um, and I think they're just too important to play, both of them, in the deck that I'm going to do it. We're playing a two of Archangel Addison in the main deck here. Lot of cards that generate tokens, obviously. Planeswalkers generate tokens. So I like to have a way, mostly, to um, deal with weird combat situations that we don't want to be in. Sure, this is great against a lot of sweepers. Doesn't work against language, which is a problem. But it does work against things like Radiant Flames, um, which we do worry about. And um, Chandra, another card that we worry about. Planar Outburst, you know, some people are playing that. So, it does work against some sweepers in the format, but mostly I even like this as a counter spell against spot removal. You know, they go to Ruinous Path something, you can just play an Aviston, totally not worried at that point. Also, just a good card to flash in, you know, even if you're not protecting, hey Ziggy, even if you're not protecting any creatures, still a fine card to flash in. I like everything about Aviston. We're playing white in the deck. Let's play Avacyn. That's how I feel about Avacyn in this format. We can make white mana, let's play Avacyn. Into the meteor creatures here, though. We're playing one copy of the rest of our creatures here, but one copy of Linvala the Preserver, and there's another copy in the sideboard. Really coming into her own in this format, I would have liked to make room for um, Eldrazi Displacer, and he was a two of for a while, just not in any way consistent, you know? We've got some good displaceable creatures here, obviously. I just I could not make the mana work with that, um, so we need the colorless mana to displace things. But that aside, Linvala just often good when you cast her one time, you know? You get 3-3 three, three flyer, you get 5 life if you're down, um, and just that can really be amazing. 6 mana for 8 power, 2 creatures, they both fly, 
five life, you can just be a crazy play, you know. And with um, uh, Nahiri's, actually this goes for the rest of the creatures here, with Nahiri's ultimate, this could be a really nice situational thing to pull out. And she'll pop back to your end where you can play her again if you go down in life again. So, or down in creatures, whatever. So Linvala, <laughs> amazing. We're playing one copy of Dragonlord Dramoka. A lot of people haven't noticed yet, but Dragonlord Dramoka is actually crazy in this format. <laughs> he doesn't die to Languish, he doesn't die to fresh Chandra, or really even Chandra that they pumped up to the nth degree, you know, it takes forever for Chandra to kill this. Doesn't die to Grasp of Darkness, doesn't die to Ultimate Price, you know. Basically, Declaration and Stone and Stasis Snare take this out. And not a whole lot else. Aside from that, it's a huge flying lifelink thing. Like, that's insanity. Um, everybody knows, or at this point, it's, it's sort of widely considered true, that the Bant Company deck is weak to flyers, and this can be a ridiculous flyer to play in the late game against company, gain some life back, and just swing through for almost guaranteed damage. Um, we're playing a lot of big flyers at the top end of the curve. The deck performs very well against Band Company, very, very good matchup there. And depending on your local meta, that could be really important, because Band Company is a very popular deck, and this deck has very good game against it. Dragonlord Dragon Lord Jamoka, um, Dragon Lord Jamoka is part of that. I <laughs> mean, just a good creature overall, regardless of what deck you're playing against. Great against control, too. Let me throw that out there, not only because against Collected Company, they obviously can't company during your combat step or the end of your turn, but against control, they can't kill your dudes on your turn, they can't counter your spells, just, and they can't counter this. <laughs> Jamoka, I think, his last six months may be a very important six months. And to finish the creatures, we're playing one copy of Dragon Lord of Tarka. Yet another reason why I'd really like to work Eldrazi Displacer in the deck. But again, just one casting of him works really well. Or her? I think it might be her. Uh, but anyway, just one casting of a Tarka works pretty well most of the time. Bust Planeswalkers, which we can be sort of thin against even though we're playing. A bunch of tokens, so we can go wide enough we can get in on planeswalkers, but just another way of killing planeswalkers. We can kill a group of creatures with the Dragonlord Tarka, swing in for eight, that's awesome. Also good with Nahiri, you can ultimate this out with Nahiri, bust a planeswalker, and then put it back into your hands so you can play it again later to bust a group of creatures or another planeswalker, whatever. Um, so, everything about a Tarka is awesome. Again, we're going fairly late in the deck, we'll get the mana to play him. Let's play a Tarka because he's one of the bombiest plays in the format. We're playing some removal, mostly five copies of main deck removal that aren't creature or planeswalker based. Um, and we're playing a bunch of removal that is creature or planeswalker based, but still, let's get into the spells here. We're playing three copies of Declaration and Stone and two copies of Stasis Snare. Um, Declaration and Stone, just a premium spell in the format. We could play four of it, and I, I wouldn't mind doing that. Just, just fantastic, perfect, unconditional exile removal, that's great. Um, just really don't have to talk too much about it. Stasis Snare, though, um, fantastic card in the format as an instant speed answer to both Avacyn and Ormondal. So, love, love, love Stasis Snare in this format. We'll see it in many a deck, I would imagine. Um, just, just great, great instant speed removal. We've got room for one more card in the main deck here. I'm going to play a one copy of Secure the Waste. Secure the Waste good for a couple reasons. Um, I'm throwing one Westvale Abbey into the mana base here, so obviously Secure is great with Westvale Abbey there. A great one-two punch in this format everybody knows about. I mean, we'll see coming. But we also have the Gideon trick here, which is another time-tested trick in the format. You can go from having literally nothing on your board at the end of their turn, playing a relatively big Secure the Waste for, say, four or five, and then playing a Gideon on your turn, going ahead and getting the emblem, and then suddenly you've got eight or ten power on the board where you had nothing at the end of your opponent's turn when they said go. So, great trick with Secure the Wastes. And Secure the Wastes is also good with Arlen Core because she can give all her creatures a buff, too. So, you know, and I'd like to work in another copy of Secure, but I don't know exactly what to do about that. <laughs> Secure is just really, really, really good in this deck, and when you do draw it, fantastic card. I'm playing 25 lands in the deck, and it's a pretty cut and dried mana base, you know. We're throwing in the one Westvale Abbey because we're producing a bunch of tokens, and we're playing Secure the Waste, let's play Westvale Abbey. Um, aside from that, just don't really have much to say about it. I mean, it's a pretty stock Naya mana base. We have a pretty decent um, base of colors uh, in Naya right now, so pretty easy mana base to build, I think. Here's our sideboard right here, and we're doing a lot of things out of our sideboard. You notice there's a lot of one and two ups here. Um, so we're trying to cover a lot of bases, and these are really, really good sideboard colors here. So we want to play as many good sideboard cards as we can. Hallowed Moonlight, obviously good against Bank Company, which we already have good game against, I promise you. But Hallowed Moonlight just really sews it up for us, and we see a lot of Bank Company in the format. Uh, Radiant Flame's a very important card and has been played in the main deck of this deck. 
Um, just really fantastic against Crypto with rights. Um, green Black Aristocrats. Cannot stress how good that is against that deck. Sigarda, good for a variety of reasons. We can't be targeted by sacrifice effects. The target player sacrifices a creature. We can't be targeted by Follow the Titans. We can't be targeted by Sphinx's Tutelage. Like, there's a bunch of stuff in the format that Sigarda helps us out with. So, good creature there. Naturalize we're playing because we really don't like Virulent Plague at all. And there are other enchantments. People are playing Tutelage. People are playing Silkraft, Stasis Snare. But mostly, we hate Virulent Plague. So, let's play Naturalize. Here are your power rankings for the deck right here. Now, don't... Freak out, everybody. Your final score is 71. Now, people who have followed the channel for a while will know that that is the highest score on the channel ever. The highest deck I've ever done is a 70, and we've done like four decks that hit 70, including Abzan. In the last format was a good example of a 70. Um, this is a 71, which makes it the new record for, um, it's, the, it's the new high score on the channel. Um, and I'll go through real quickly here and kind of explain my reasoning. As far as the 9 in power, we play a lot of powerful cards. Nearly every card in the deck is one of the more, most powerful cards in standard. <laughs> so that's, that's reasonable there. Speed is fairly low. We do go long, but it's our lowest category. We do everything else fairly well. Um, synergy, there is some synergy in the deck, not only between Nahiri and all the big creatures that are situational and we can kind of put into play after her ultimate, but of course we've got a bunch of Planeswalkers that create tokens and synergize by pumping. You know, Nissa can pump, Gideon can pump, Arlen can pump. So it's just a lot of synergy in that too. Versatility is a relatively high, you know. We got a bunch of different game plans and a lot of different paths to victory in the deck. Whether we're going super wide with tokens and pumping them to make them huge and just hit in face, or whether we're using Westvale Abbey, whether we're flying through with a big Atarka or Linvala or Dramoka, you know. There are many, many, many ways to win with this deck, so we're very versatile. Um, as far as resiliency goes, very resilient. If we get hit by a language, we can just recover next turn by putting a plant and a, a knight into play, you know, if we have planeswalkers out. Just these planeswalkers are very, very resilient against mass removal mostly, which we see a lot of in the format. So resiliency is high, offense is relatively high, because again, we can just make a gang of tokens or fly over with big fat flyer people. That's always great. Um, defense is relatively high between the planeswalkers that kill things, Dragonlord Atarka kills things, we're playing, you know, Stasis Snare and Declaration of Stone in the deck. Just a lot of removal in the deck. Defense is relatively high. Oath of Chandra, I have to keep going. Game 1 is an 8. Very, very successful in Game 1, especially considering this is not a well-established deck in the format and people don't know what they're playing against yet. Um, game 2, we do go a little ways down because there are some things that they can bring in um, against us in sideboards, especially in decks like Esper Control, where the first game is a 50-50 for the most part, but they have a better sideboard plan than we do, at least for the time being. Um, and then consistency is relatively relatively high, just because our mana base is not too shaky, but sometimes it doesn't all come together, you know, we want to, you know, we want to either get our tokens game going, or we want to do something good with our planeswalkers, like, you know, Ultimate Nahiri, or Ultimate, any one of our planeswalkers, um, we want to go long and establish a really, really, really good board state, that's, that's the number one goal in the deck, go long, establish a huge board state, either go wide with tokens and swing, or just have a fat creature on the board finish the game for you, so, those are our ways to victory, and sometimes it does not all pan out, but mostly it does. Here's the problem, if it can be called a problem. The final um, cost here of the deck is about $485 on TCG Player. That is the highest cost deck that we've covered in a while, but I need to remind you that last standard we were covering like $800,000 decks that have playsets of Jace and fetch lands and stuff in them. This, I really feel like, plays all of the most powerful cards, and just is super duper power. That's, that's the, just, main focus of the deck is all is power, raw freaking power. We've got a lot of it in this deck, and we really couldn't play many cards that are better than the ones we're already playing. And just everything is top notch, and $500 is a lot of money. That is a, that is much more money than I have to spend. But if you wanted to be competitive in last standard, you had to pay way more than this, so not too much to ask in a way. Let me know how you felt about this one. I know it looks weird in some ways, you know, a lot of two of Planeswalkers, what's up with that? But shuffle it up, proxy it up, try it out, don't 
to X Mage, do whatever you got to do. I guarantee this deck is going to win a bunch of games for you, especially once you get a little well versed in it and you know what you're supposed to do depending on the situation. It's very much a deck that needs to be tested a lot more and probably has a place in the format, almost certainly. It just needs to be refined and, and honed, you know. But I think this is going to be an important deck. Um, I've, I've been wrong and I've been right, but at, at this, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and call that this, I think, is going to be a very important deck. That's all I've got for now. Let me know what you want to see next time. I think Green Red Rights, Cryptolith Rights, is probably what I'm doing next time, but I'm also working um, on a double deck tech for Assault Formation. I know a lot of people want to see another deck tech for that card before it goes out. It's almost time for it to rotate. October, it'll be gone, so I need to do something with that. I love Assault Formation every bit as much as you guys do. And I've definitely got something brewing up. Not only that, but other decks on the horizon, and I'm always open to your suggestions too. So let me know how you feel, and I'll start making things. Appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this deck. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, this, this is the real, you guys. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm Deb from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the content, like, share, comment, sub if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, my wizards.